What's up guys, I wanted to do a quick video on the top five reasons why I'm suggesting you use Orca Slicer in 2024 and forever at this point, unless a new one comes out that's even better. Um, so let's dive right into all five top reasons. With number one, we have printer compatibility. So within Orca Slicer, there is this printer section here at the top left. And within here, ooh, if I drill it back down, there are multiple printers here that I've created my own presets for, as well as you can come in here and choose more system presets if you would like. You can even click on create printer, which will open up even more options for you to come in here and create your own printers. And they do have the ability to even select um, custom preset printers if you have such as an Elegoo printer or uh, another Creality printer, if you have a Bamboo printer, if you have any of those that fall into a specific brand, you can come in here within Orca Slicer and they have their pre-built system settings that you go you can go through and choose, which will just give you a, a, a base uh, configuration which you can use. And then you can go in and actually modify it even further. So here we even have Anchor, Anycubic, artillery and so on so this is number one because um for me i have multiple printers i have 13 printers all together i have different brands of printers and this optimizes my process on printing because i can just open up one program choose all my different printers or whichever one i want to use that day and send a file to and i can even come in here and choose different um, presets so number one is printer compatibility if you have multiple printers and if not and you choose to add more in the future um, you know this can definitely grow with you and your farm number two on the list is efficient algorithms for processing your prints so it, when you want to come in here and actually slice your print i've noticed that orca slicer is significantly faster when you go through and actually slice your plate and it will go through and generate all the necessary things for your model, such as um, the seam, the infill, and all that stuff. And already, here we go, and you can see all the different attributes that you can choose and review. Um, and just like other slicers where you can go through and actually see all the insides of it, how many walls, um, you know, your retraction, and all that stuff. So. I've noticed that Orca Slicer is significantly faster at slicing just one plate or even multiple plates at once. And uh, for me, it's optimized my process on printing just because I have so much to print at once, as well as just trying to plan out my prints with the multiple plates as well, which is really cool. And just to do that really quick, you can say, let's say you want to print just this one thing. You can come here to your plate and you can say, add a plate. And then this adds a secondary plate and you can come in here and we'll just add a primitive model. Uh, we'll just do an Orca cube. And there also are presets, uh, which are really nice for, you know, little handy models like the Benchy, little Orca cubes. They also have little Voron cubes and so on. You can see here just to uh, preload some stuff if you're doing some calibration tests. Number three is the actual customizable uh, printer profiles. So as you can see here, I do have some user preset profiles that I've went through and made, such as just a copy profile, a coasters profile, a little tadlings profile for small flexies, one for a light box and so on. And you can come in here and even choose some other presets that your system provides. If I was to choose a different printer, there would also be other presets that w you could choose from. Uh, there also is the availability to um, modify uh, you know anything within the settings and you can save it however you want so if I wanted two raft layers and then I hit save and then you can come in here and we can just say raft and then hit save and then next time I want to go through and do a print with the raft all I have to do is choose this profile so the uh, printer profiles are super nice just because it can, again, optimize your process with printing because you can just preset the things that you print all the time if you're doing that or if you're looking for a specific infill or a specific wall amount or you always want brim, you can always you can set that within a profile, save it, and then everything you load within that print uh, you know, on that plate will be able to print with those specific settings. Number four in my book is the painting feature. So I know a big thing with all these new bamboo printers coming out and some other 
printers that have the um, AMS or MMU uh, capabilities for switching the filaments or the colors are a big thing and it's ever growing and you know it's only making the technology even better so one thing that's nice with an orca slicer that i haven't found within some other slicers that i've tested is the ability to do color painting so like for this model specifically you have all these different tools like circle sphere triangle height range uh, fill and even gap fill so even if I didn't have a bamboo printer, I can still even use like my CR10 here. And let's say I'd like to have the fill on just the bottom part of the benchy here. And um, let's say I'd wanna print it just like that, no other modifications to it. Then it's saying um, that these two filaments are not too close because it's ABS and PLA, which they have completely different printing temperatures, which makes sense. But the nice thing is, is that I could still do these multicolor prints on like my CR10 and Ender 3 or any other type of single color or filament printer because um, basically it will pause at that specific layer change when it needs to facilitate that color change. And then you would just have to manually take the filament out and put the new filament in, do a little bit of a purge so that way the next color is all there. And then you can keep running with your print. And then the next time it gets to the other color it has to switch back to, it will keep pausing. And um, Bamboo will basically tell you uh, the amount of times you know that you have to change the colors and things like that. So if I switch back to PLA, so then that way the temperatures are the same. We're gonna go here and slice the the model. As you can see here, we still have the raft from the last uh, printer profile, which is perfect. And then we can see here uh, up at the top right that there's going to be filament changes 360 times. So again, you're going to have to facilitate that if you're doing this on a printer that only takes one color at once and it will even tell you how many different colors or how much filament you're going to use of those two colors, how much is going to be flushed. You can change your flushing volumes here on the left. Um, and then I just typically use the multiplier. Uh, if I'm switching from white to black and black to white, I'll normally do like 1.15. So then that way it just uses a little bit more filament to get that full color out. There also is a capability to add the purge tower. So then that way, as soon as you change your um, your color or your prime tower, uh, it will go ahead and just it will go ahead and actually do like a little square uh, just to make sure that the color is out and just prime it even a little bit more. Um, so then that way, when it starts printing your model, you're not going to start getting cross colored um, prints. So it would be completely black when it needs to be black and completely white when it needs to be white. Uh, if you do run into the issue where you're having your colors kind of be of a gradient or where you have your past color and your next color, you might need to up your flushing volumes. Or if you're doing this all manually, you might have to just flush it more manually when you're putting in the new filament. But I think this is a huge feature because you're still able to take a printer like this and print you know, um, a model with, you know, colored eyes or spikes or anything that you would like to do, or even like here where we have the boat, uh, one color at the bottom and one color at the top and not have to spend a whole bunch of money on upgrading a printer just because it will automatically change all the filaments for you. Just be mindful that again, 360 filament changes is a lot. So you're going to basically be living right next to your printer but the capability is there. So I, I found that this is super helpful and I've even done this just for testing on my Ender 3 NG, uh, which you can see whoop, right there, the green one. So if you haven't seen that, I actually 3D printed a 3D printer. Go check out that video on my channel, it's really cool. And uh, I actually did do a multicolor print with that printer and it again is only single color right now. Um, I wanted to do an enraged carrot rabbit feeder system for it. Um, but again, this is a huge option for Orca Slicer that I really enjoy just because colors are the next thing for prints. And number five in my book is just the open source and community uh, building uh, compatibility and whatnot that is surrounding this project. So you can see that we're currently on the version 2.0 release and they can go through and they say all the different things that they're adding and why they're adding all the specific um, things that have been changed and you can come in here and actually download it. So if you have Windows, if you have Linux or Mac, there's support for that. 
and uh, we can even check out some of the other releases just to see what some things have changed. So you can see here's a beta release for 2.1.0, and then they just go through and slowly list saying, you know, now there's brand new icons, um, there's now support for open and import models. So if you use printables, again, you can just come here and click right on the on the little icon, click open in Orca Slicer and it will open. It's even supported for Thingiverse, supported for Maker World, and so on. You can, there's even other things for infill, which they've changed like their infill directions. I think that's a huge thing because not all slicers offer all the same different infill types. Um, and they're also trying to make these, uh, the seams a lot better as you can see here. And basically trying to hide it a lot more where you can barely see it um, where some of the models that I've printed with past slicers, it's just a giant line on the side of the model and you're just trying to figure out how you can hide it. So it's really awesome that the community is coming together and constantly working on trying to better this product and just make it open source for all your different printers and you know being able to use all the different features for it. So guys, Orca Slicer is a great program. Precise Z height is even awesome. Uh, one thing that I wanna say really quick about this is let's say you have a curve or something like that and your typical layer height is like, um, you know, 0.2 millimeters or something like that. And you have a curve that um, you want to, um, you know, make stronger, you can actually choose a variable Z height. So then that way at the specific curve, it can be like 0.16 instead of 0.2. So then that way it is a little bit stronger. You're not going to have those overhang challenges, which you might face if you're trying to print fast, if you don't have enough cooling and things like that. And, you know, just the support overall with all this stuff. So again, make sure you check out Orca Slicer. I'm not sponsored by them, but I really love their product. It's really awesome. I have it running on, you know, my desktop computer, my laptop. You're able to actually sign into it with Bamboo Labs. So then that way it will sync, you know, all your printers that you currently are running. And, um, you know, so you can come in here and you can see like all your different colors and things. You can choose all your different printers and things. Um, and it still has all the same capabilities that you would see within your other slicers, such as, you know, the camera, you're able to control it. Um, you're able to review like the micro SD card. So this is specifically for bamboo, this portion of it, but uh, for even like my clipper machines, I'm able to interface with the whole clipper dashboard. I'm able to click on macros, able to update the printer.cfg, a whole bunch of different things. So guys, Orca Slicer is number one. It's the one that I'm using. It's awesome. Make sure you check it out. I'm gonna have the links in the description as well as check out the 3D printing a 3D printer video. That was super awesome. I do wanna do another tutorial or a tutorial on that once I get time to, but make sure you check out Orca Slicer, get printing, and I'll see you in the next one.